I'm not sure what his opponent's playing. His opponent is undefeated, though. So Hoban is. Can you get a look for it? Hmm. Nah, not right now. I don't think. I, someone has to go look for him. But uh, we'll see if Hoban can continue to be remain undefeated despite his one draw. It's Mario. Uh, I talked to Mario actually when I was walking them over to the feature match table, and Mario said they have played before. I did not ask who won the last time they played, but he did inform me they have dueled before. So we will see what is happening. Oh, 10, 10, 10. 10 is pretty high on two dice. Five, half of that. So Hoban will be going second. And so I think they're going to wait to begin. Get over here and see what the stream is. I'm kind of far away from the stream, so I can't really see the stream chat. So, yes, yes. Continue these National Champs 2014. Makes me want to continue to play these games. I appreciate the support. Billy, make that Hearthstone sound you're making. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> Murlocs? <laughs> Watch out for it. Oh, the game is underway. Don't say the game. Hold on. Kalen's sitting here, so I'm going to skip right. No, he's in the feature, isn't he? No, he's, he's trying to fix the internet right now. But. All right, so Hoban starts with all monsters. Hoban won the die roll. All of his friends are pissed drunk and he wouldn't tell me what he was playing. <laughs> well, we'll, we'll see soon enough. He's like, my nigga is playing the champion of the world right now, <laughs> Patrick Hoban. And I'm like, <laughs> Alright, so Hoban's going to start with a T set. For those who don't know, that used to be the most common play in Yu Gi Oh! It was T set pass, T set pass. Like, that was the play. Because <laughs> you couldn't set more than one because of heavy and you'd be setting spy. There's too many good monsters to set spy and. Uh, to Koichi. To yep. Yeah, that was the format. Hmm? Oh, Sandmoth, yeah. Because that was when people were playing Mystic Swordsman level 2. That, I remember that when I was playing this server. Yep. Um, Alright, so we have Abyss here for Lin. I haven't heard of Sandmoth since Nam. I wonder what Hoban said. I mean, I, I, I don't know what maybe he went ahead and said uh, exactly a Lind with a sphere, but that's dangerous living. Hoban, right? Well, everything is working the way Hoban likes right now. All right, and I'm back. I'm slowly okay, getting right. the internet situation worked out here, <laughs> hopefully. <laughs> it's just like this internet. They, they have a hard line for the for Twitch. Because Twitch is awesome like that, and it deserves a hard line. <laughs> <laughs> Make sure we can get the uh, stream out to you guys. Absolutely. There we go. Home network. Anyways. So he's overlaying. Oh, we're going hard in the paint here. Oh, Ghost Trick Alucard. Still not sure what Mario's playing. Freak through skill. Okay. That, that's in a lot of decks. It's a pretty popular card right now. But I, I assume he's, playing, he's probably playing Mermails or something. Because Break through skill is usually used to stop uh, Bizdweller. The only decks like I think it excels in are like Mermails and Fire Kings because it makes Bizdweller virtually nothing. Mm -hmm. And you can't, Typhoon doesn't do anything. Her heretics. Anything that can be stopped by a floodgate monster. Oh boy. He is bringing the onslaught. <laughs> Just if he gets if he gets any more pikes out there, he might have a phalanx. <laughs> I'm not sure. <laughs> This is what happens when you draw like a lot of monsters and mermails. You usually end up with a lot of guys on the field and a lot of fast damage. Steam, why are you loading up? I don't need you to get on. Nobody wants you. Nope, mermails. All right, so I this is not good because he's going to get dweller unless I guess. Because maybe his back rows in another breakthrough skill. Oh. The breakthrough skill is going to, uh, like I just said, it's going to be really effective against the Dweller on his own turn since he can just chain the breakthrough skill anytime Hoven decides to try and Dweller.
Steve and Mario can make a push back. I'm so I'm not used to Mermails having so many s smaller attack monsters on the field. I'm so used to just seeing big beater after mm -hmm. big beater. I don't know. This is the best way to do it. You keep your floaters out and mm -hmm. just. Yep. <laughs> Discarding marksman. Oh, and the archer. Grab back the lind. Fiendish chain. Yep. They'll blow out the card in this situation. F -f -f Fiendish chain. You just two for one with the Fiendish chain. Like that, that Fiendish chain might end this game. The Alucard can pop the back row. And then I'm sure Hoban has a way to kill him. Unless his back row is something he can use right now. Yep, it is a sphere, so he is going to have some plays. really want to know what's in his hand because it's hard to tell. Open's hand is pike, turge, and gun. Or is that an undine? It's a gun. Yeah, it's a, no, it's a, yeah I, was, I was seeing as the turge is an undine, but it is a turge. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Still no luck? Still trying to figure out. Not sure why it's not giving me any connection. Granted, we are working with a... iPad Wi-Fi. iPad unit. Hotspot. Yeah. See if maybe I so can. So he's just going to force out the breakthrough skill, just get out of the way. Lynn dies. Um, what does he grab here? A pike? Maybe he has a. If he has something like a heavy infantry. Yeah, but I was about to say, as, as uncommon as infantry is, infantry would be really good right here. I mean, gun's also. Gun's pretty good. Pretty good. Because he's going to have the dweller to uh, fight back. And knowing Hoban's hand, that dweller could actually tilt things in Mario's favor. Mm -hmm. This game is still very early. Absolutely. The yeah. life. Uh, did you? Uh, he took. A, he crashed a, a lend into the Alucard. Yeah. So. Or maybe it was to the dweller. The dweller it was to the Alucard. Oh, okay. Three hundred damage. Instead of the. Oh, the dweller was still attached, so he didn't yeah. want to crash and have him not activate the effect. Okay. Exactly. And this is the way the mirror match should be played. Both these guys are playing the mirror match. Correctly, they're ending with. If you didn't know, if you can't notice, uh, Hoban had Dweller Lind in the end with an Alucard, but now Mario's gonna have the Dweller Lind, which is very good in the mirror because mm -hmm. you have uh, any monster in your deck sitting there floating and stop everything they're throwing at you over there. Well, with the exception of you know the, mon the big guys, you can drop them in the hand. But 2200 Dweller, 19 he brought the Lind out in defense was a mistake because I mean 1900 li Lind is nothing to like. Yeah, that would swing over the Alucard right now. I mean, yeah, he can't because he brought out in defense and overlaid. Uh, he, he wouldn't have been able to because. Uh, oh yeah, this is uh, this is not in uh, battle phase any right. longer because he overlaid for the dweller. But Indeed. so I can't see what Hoban drew. It looks like another turge. It's double turge. He drew another turge this time, which is not the best. Not terrible, but it's not in this situation is not good. Mm -hmm. He's. Um, no, I mean, but I, I uh, hope. I guess you I w you could pike here, discarding the gun to force the dweller and then search out Undyne. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Discard you have to discard the gun to force the dweller because you have to get through the materials at some point. <laughs> and then search for an Undyne to dump a title to waste a dweller on nothing. Yeah, that's that's pretty much the only play I saw Hoban doing. Mm -hmm. So he's trying to set up so he can still uh, have a lot of cards after that dollar has gone. No idea. Probably a couple. He uses Alucard, so I'm sure he has another one in there. 
pike crash into Dweller. Just so he doesn't take any damage unwarranted on his turn or in the next turn. Crashed into the Dweller for, so uh, what is that? Uh, 26. 600? Yeah, 600. Everything went to defense mode. Oh, Teus discard gun. That is very bad for Hope. And things turn very quickly. Like, you see, like, remember when I saw the breakthrough? I was like, well, there's only a couple decks that, that it's very good. And mm -hmm. this is definitely one of them because of how effective it is against Abyssal player. Uh, uh, we have, like, E connection on the iPad right now. That's why we can't uh, connect to anything. I think we're just, <laughs> I think the hotel is jamming our signal. Really? I have no idea. <laughs> that that would be pretty crazy. They they want twenty five dollars an hour or something for the internet. So it's, it's thirteen. It's thirteen dollars for the whole day for Wi Fi. No, in the room, so but yeah, in this room, no, in, yeah. th in this room it's like twenty five or something it's crazy. Uh, things. Uh, Hoven knows things are going terrible for him. Oh um, yeah. Don't most people play doubles? I, I glance down and then now all of a sudden oh, yeah, vomiting on the yeah, field. He has gone like. <laughs> yeah, it's supposed to someone to go straight monster. It's not going to bring anything back. It's funny, right before this round started, I was sitting down at the table talking with Hoban, and he was like, I used to think I didn't like the mirror match, but now I think I do. But uh, I don't think he likes it right now. I wouldn't like it at this point. If Mario runs Double Dweller, this game's almost sewed up. And I'm assuming he does, it's like a $20 card now, right? Yeah. <laughs> okay, so there's three monsters that were killed, so he has two left to attack with. Yeah, so Turge Tius, so that's uh, 17 and 16. Uh, 3,300 damage to Patrick Hogan. 17. Yep, double dweller. No, no surprise there. How much attack is the surge? Hoban needs the 17. 34. It was, I think it was a pike. I don't know. No, he attacked with the surge. Yeah, 17, 17, so 3,400. What did Hoban draw? Oh, come on, Hoban, turn your hand a little bit. Oh, it was a Phoenix chain. chain, but that's... Mm, I think he's just too low. With a double dweller, I don't think it makes sense. I, I think... think he would have been if he would have had a uh, breakthrough over the chain. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot better. In Mermails, I would run Breakthrough over Chain. I mean, or I would run them like... I mean, this is... Uh, yeah. This is... Yeah. Wait, what are you, what are you, why are you dwelling right now? He's just, just, he just said it doesn't matter what you send, I'm going to do it. <laughs> you mm -hmm. can always wait to see what they send and then Chain, because it's a cost that done with Undyne. Yep. But it, it really doesn't matter in the situation, because he knows he's going to do it regardless. But... And that's, I'm pretty sure he's. Mm. Right. Well, I'm hoping there's a Phoenix Chain on. We'll have to Phoenix Chain the Dweller. And yep. I'm hoping he's going to stay alive, I think. So he'll take two, two 300, I think. 300. Oh, yeah, I'm saying 2,000 after the TS and then whatever that. Is that a Dweller? So seven, dweller. 17 more? So 3,700. All right, so Hoban did buy himself another draw. So. So 3,700 to Patrick puts him down to 300 life points, which puts him in that really that, ter that scary danger zone mm -hmm. with Cowboy that you just never want to be in. Yeah, I'm pretty sure these versions of Mermails definitely use Cowboy, right? A bunch of rank fours. All the rank fours. Um, this is this is it. Nope, Reckless Greed's not going to give him anything. Nope. Definitely not enough to... Well, he now has the title in the grave with uh, Dweller being oh, Phoenix Chain. Oh, so. yeah, he could mess up and... Oh, he didn't Dweller. He took too long, and I hope he is going to summon Dweller. <laughs> but he has the Phoenix Chain. No, oh, he has the Phoenix Chain on oh the Oh, yeah, the Phoenix so Chain is on the Dweller, so he can't even do it. That's yeah. right. And he, drew, and he has the controller, yeah. so he could totally uh, make Leo right Right, right, now. right. Leo I forget. Yeah, the, I forgot the Dweller just didn't have an effect. It's, it's okay. One of the face downs is bottomless, and it's still going to suck for Is it? <laughs> I have no idea. Oh, man. I feel like he would have used it on the title. No, he would have waited, so... Warning. That's a good card, too. <laughs> yeah, that, that's going to seal this. <laughs> Can't tell who's clapping for what. Nah, but it certainly was oh, perfectly it's timed. Over there. Yeah, it's coming from way over there. It was certainly perfectly well-timed for the end of this match. Yeah, it was. Well, that was game one going to Mario. Yep. So while these duelists go into their side deck, we're going to go ahead and take a quick commercial break. Stick Be right around. back after that uh, with Billy Brake and myself commentating for round or game two. Uh, Patrick Hoban versus Mario Ramos. Be back in a bit.
those who managed to skip the ads because you're jerks and you have ad blocker. Uh, finally got internet back so we can see the chat again. It's exciting. So, fun times. Son of a Hoban. I like it. All right, and these duelists are getting ready for game two. Looks like we're just about to come back from commercial break. So everybody will get to enjoy this. Yeah, that, that first game was good. Both players played well, and uh, Mario came out on top because he had multiple dollars and the breakthrough skill over instead of the Phoenix chain. Absolutely. So those, that, that uh, meta call is really important. Absolutely. I was never a really a big fan of Breakthrough Skill. Neither was I until I these decks. Yeah. Exactly. So I played Fire Kings, actually. I was like, Breakthrough Skill yep. is stone. Yeah. Is that two Reckless Greeds that I see in his hand right now? Or uh, I can never tell. I wish they never made that card super rare. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> it was common. You could just it see it all. The supers just look like Phoenix Chain. Hey, Mark Lovelace. I remember you. you the man. I'm glad you're back. I'm glad you're watching the stream. It's a serious Treeborn Frog. Paul Clark just walked by. Paul! Are you still in it? Sweet. Paul Clark still in? Yeah, he was. Woot woot. <laughs> I don't know who this Kalem person is. I know who Kalen is. I am the Kalen. I have Kalem. an N in my name. <laughs> <Kalem>. <laughs> yeah, Kalem, stop putting on ads. I can still put them on. There have not been any raccoons on stream today. I don't know if, I, I don't know oh, if I've whoa, seen raccoons being whoa, played. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I just looked up and I saw Vandy soon on the field. That's when, a card. When I played Mono Mermail, that was my favorite side deck card. And, uh, mm -hmm. Not in Miami, but the following one when the deck got very popular mm -hmm. in uh, Austin. Uh, Fiendish Chain, I think, is a better card in this situation. Than <laughs> breakthrough? Uh, it's, it's, I mean, yeah, it's similar, though. Like, breakthrough would almost do the same thing, but also stop Dweller. This keeps the pike on the field, so he can at least do the, you know, right. do his shenanigans right now, make it's a Dweller or whatever he wants to do. Right. This he was definitely going in Hoban's favor. Yeah, how many reckless greets does he have to be right? Patrick Hoban is, in fact, wearing pants, ladies and gentlemen. No shorts today. What? Probably. <laughs> Just figured I should get that out of the way. <laughs> it's Ben Leverett, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Dueling Prodigy Ben Leverett came to step by. What's your record today? The same oh. as mine. What is, that no what is this nonsense? <laughs> no, not as bad as mine. Not, <laughs> not, as, not as bad as mine. Did you play Noble Knights too? <laughs> <laughs> he hung in a little longer than I did. That's good. How's your brother doing? He did great, is what he's saying. This game is quickly turning into a blowout. Absolutely. Because like, you've invested so many cards into the Vandy scene because it is very good in the mirror, but not when they have three backers and one's yeah. Phoenix Chain. Mm -hmm. Now it's three cards to. To mid is not total here. Of four. Mid no, four. five. Total of five cards. Yeah, I mean, Hoban lost game one, but he's probably going to win this game. <laughs> yeah, he yeah, he did. The Vanity scene was really premature. I think you, you definitely, with that card, you wait until you grind through all their answers and then, and then tribute Vanity yeah. scene game. Yeah, Right. You can't just throw it out there and hope to ride four, four attacks to victory. <laughs> you gotta be careful. Only well, he does have title though, which is always something Title's in mermaids. It doesn't quite get over an abyss lead, but it's a good card. He could, yeah, if he doesn't have the, if he doesn't have Patrick doesn't have an answer for this. He's just gonna go probably either big eye or Draco second. Just take it, take it or blow it up. Yep. Or arc. Arc. Well. Wouldn't go art. I mean, because you have a rank, a level seven on the field. Mm -hmm. Since he smashed, no, I'm just saying. I mean, it doesn't. Yeah, it looks like he's charging gun in his hands. I know you can bring back the power. Oh yeah, Ho Hoban could do art yeah. on the next turn. And then, oh well, and he's he's gone forever. But I haven't seen anyone playing six samurai today. Yes. There's 337 people. Yeah, that's cool. It's almost leaked. <laughs> I know, almost. right? If there were a thousand three hundred thirty-seven, we'd yes. be really happy. We'd no, be no, we would not be happy. We would be no. stressed so thin. No, we would be turning away six hundred people. So <laughs> we, would, we would be dead. <laughs> we, would, we would literally be dead. But it would be three hundred thirty. It's a great turnout. I'm really happy with the turnout. Yeah, it's a fun tournament. If you haven't been to a circuit yet, you definitely need to come. It's um, a little bit more of a competitive scene, but uh, a lot of fun. You can see a lot of great dueling, lots of vendors, uh, great atmosphere. It's a play. It's a player's atmosphere. Yep. 
you get uh, and you only get better by going uh, by going to the more competitive. You never uh, you get better by playing against people that are better. Than you, right, and that's the only way you have to. Yeah, it's just like when you uh, work out. You know, you have to lift weight that's heavier than what you can lift to mm -hmm. break your muscle down to build. So you have to get beat in order to build your Yu-Gi-Oh muscle. Yep, absolutely. <laughs> I guess that's the way to look at it. Oh my God. So is it Gaios? Yeah, it's Gaios. That's how I view the world. Oh yeah? <laughs> <laughs> Trick Series Toronto needs to happen? That definitely might. It's a, it'd, it'd be a fun one. We did a Metro Series in Montreal, which was decently successful. Trevor went to that one. Ma Montreal. Flo, shout out to Flo. <laughs> this isn't a Marvel stream. Though. Yeah, L uh, Calif Southern California regionals are crazy. I don't know why you need like I, c I would not enter a thousand person regional. <laughs> yeah. Seriously, like there's so little to actually gain from that other than just going it for a the day. The experience, play. yeah, the experience. The experience and playing. That's really it, but. Just How the chance of topping you? that just for an invite. That's so much. Five, four, four, something. The one you went to win? Huh? Which one? I don't know. I don't, the last one was like four or something. No, I remember the one you went to. The one that you, like, you won your two ICS and you won that region. I have no idea. Anyways, Hoban's still got a field. <laughs> yeah, uh, this is the game is going exactly as so I had to break this. Oh, Hoban does play Breakthrough. Yep, he, pro he probably oh, decides. Yeah. Game. For the and from here in Fire Fist, I guess. Why, I don't understand why you just name it. Oh, because he wants to maximize his combos. Yep. This is bigger than a Colorado Springs regional. <laughs> so what is doors this time? I thought guys you can't attack at the time. He break through it. Oh, okay. And he was able to scoop it up. We knew that was coming pretty quickly, so oh we yeah. are going to have a game three. Hoban is not going to go away quietly, but Mario will get to go first in game three, so we do not know what is going to happen. Here's what happens. He opens three Royal Decree Vanities Fiend. <laughs> <laughs> or the Vauvel Chain Drake of Zach. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I haven't, seen open in so long. I haven't seen anyone open with it, like, all day. I need to know if Mario has three upstart goblins in his deck because then it will be the, the streak will continue of every match I commentate. Yep. Both players having three upstarts. Hoping, hoping, hoping. hoping. <laughs> Are you hoping for this? Hoping has been always a big. It's always been his favorite card. Years. Yep. Always. Upstart theory. Even when he wasn't using it, he always wanted to use it. Just the idea of playing thirty-seven cards in the deck. I mean, it's it's okay when you know there isn't forty good cards. But see, I, every time I used to like you know build, when I would you know deck build, I would be I would have too many cards. I would never have like have 37. I would have 42, 43. It'd be yep. cut. It'd be cutting the fat, so you never even get like that. But the format's so different now. You don't have fat to cut. It's just exactly. The, it's just the toolbox. They're all toolbox decks of their own archetypes. Yep. Yu-Gi-Oh pre archetypes was pretty cool. <laughs> it's a different game now though. Absolutely. Evil Fink Rebo, uh, as Billy was saying earlier, I have not seen any six samurai players. There may be, you know, like one or two that we just haven't seen, but we haven't heard anything from them. We haven't heard someone come up to me and say, dude, the Six Samurai guy is six and one right now. Yep. The only surprise maybe be Lolly's Dragon Rulers. They're, you know, Blue Eyes White Dragon mm -hmm. Mythic Rulers. <laughs> them Goo Dragons. <laughs> Game three is about to start. Freeze, how dare you post, or how dare you troll people? <laughs> Don't be talking about ban lists being up. Nope, next Friday, guys. <laughs> Freeze, right, Hoban, prize, whatever you want to say. Hoban has a breakthrough skill, two breakthrough I'm skills. So, I'm so used to talking with foreign people, and they're like, my name is not Fries, it's Freeze. Mm -hmm. or so we discarded a gun for Tius, which means he doesn't have like dragoons in his hand. <laughs> I'm laugh if Reckless goes to one and people are like, I have to play Jar of Greed in its place. And then they realized that they're terrible at this game. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, there was a time, actually, when Trigodia first came out, um, I was on a team with Augustine Herrera, and he played Trigodias with uh, Jar of Greed. So he would summon the Trigodias, 
they would, they would attack into the Trigodio, so he would activate the Jaggery, get to draw his card for trade, and the Trigodio would get pumped and deal with the monster. Yep. It was pretty cool, but it was not the most consistent. <laughs> I did. I kind of did that in a. That's why, or whenever I was running the, you know, when Robbie ran the Elemental Hero Gustav Max OTK. Right. Awesome. Uh, I was running that, or I I was running it a little bit before him, but I wasn't running their actual Fusion Gate engine. I was just running, you know, the. OTK. Yeah. So I was running a whole bunch of level 10s. I was running like Malefic Cyber Ends. I was running Trigodias. Oh, you were just trying to kill them. Exactly. <laughs> so Trigodia would come down and they're like, okay, we'll swing it in Trigodia. Activate Double Hope for Escape and triple and Double Reckless Greed. <laughs> draw eight cards. And they're like, uh-oh, well, I see that I'm dead. Yeah. Oh, look, Tobin set two. I think it might be a Bisphere and a Breakthrough, but could might just be, oh, he looks, it might be Double Breakthrough. I couldn't tell what traps they were exactly. Anyways, uh, 3,100 damage coming down onto Hoban. Kind of painful. That's a needle ceiling. That's a good ah, card. That's what they decided for the mirror. They were talking about this morning, and I was like, "Why do you say needle ceiling for the mirror?" The mirror. Hey, Josh Jordan. How you doing? Shoutouts. Hold it down in Arlington. Delinquent couldn't do it. A two next list. Oh, thank you. <sighs> Hoban can do. He drew the lead, which is never great, unless you drew Megalo Gun with it. But mm -hmm. I think they only play two Megalos, right? As far as I know, yeah. For the longest time, they actually weren't playing the lead. So that's a new development for Patrick. Is uh, playing the lead. I love lead. He's so big. Especially when the Mermail uh, matchup, mirror match is important. Like if one player has lead and the other one doesn't, which is probably why they're playing it. Like mm -hmm. you're at such a disadvantage. So there goes the debunk. That hurts a lot. Oh. Yeah, Hoven is not in great shape. The only two. cards in hand are Gunned and Lead. Nope, this could be game right. Oh. Well, he has a breakthrough, so he'll probably survive. Mm -hmm. Might, that's still a lot of damage on the board. And the Aqua Spirit. I guess, oh, he still does have the Needle Ceiling, so he could just Oh, yeah, I did forget about the Needle Ceiling. Nope, he's, got, he's about to blow him out with Needle Ceiling. Oh, <laughs> oh one for three. He does get to. I mean, he still has a really good hand. Yeah. Too. And he still gets the Lin summon. Yeah, so it's a one for three. Pat did not OTK game two. He did win game two, however. He did have a lot on the field, though. <laughs> Hoban is X01. So he's a draw with no losses. Yep. So even if he loses this one, he, he still just has to win the last two. Yep. So. And here comes the gun on the pike. Uh, even though he breakthrough skilled the pike, so he doesn't get more advantage off of it, Gund is still going to go off and get Bring him back, back some to Lin. So that's our that's 31 damage he has right there. 3100 more. And he uh, he has another Aqua Spirit in his hand, I believe. Aqua Spirit. Yep. <laughs> that, that, that is. That's too good. Ho, ho. Make Dweller. Yep. Make. Uh, what did I say? Dweller Lind. It is very good, and it is something I used to do all the time in the Mermel Mirror. Give a 1900 Lind, a 2200 Dweller, and stop everything. Hoban needs to draw something. Sphere. So that's at least a big monster he can attack with, but he's already really low on life, so it's not does not look good. Sphere's a thing. I don't know if it's enough of a thing. Mario can smell the victory. That's 19. You're at 18. Show me MST for game. No. Yeah. <laughs> Maxi for game. <laughs> Almost as bad. Yeah, I would almost just scoop. <laughs> that happens. I mean, it's 1,800 to 8,000. It's a very, very poor situation for Patrick. If Glow Up Bulb, Tingu 3, and Trish came back, would you play Plants again? Yeah, I'd figure out a way. I'd play something with your Tingu and Glow Bulb for sure. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it would probably involve Trish Hula again. I mean, yeah, that, that's a given. I'm pretty sure everyone has that in their extra. Of course. I think every deck okay, in Japan so right now runs it, even if they his don't other run trap like is features. His other trap is Breakthrough Skill, I think. That's the only reason why he would get the Linden defense mode. Ah. Hmm. Like I said, breakthrough skill, the dweller. Breakthrough. So he still has. So he's, he actually might be able to come back this game. Yeah. That, that sphere was actually a really good draw since he had the set breakthrough. Absolutely. He doesn't really have anything in his grave to bring out a pike right now. No, uh, he's turd. So he can go uh, pike, I guess, yeah, I can yeah, do pike gun, uh, bring back turge. Discard uh, the lead mm -hmm. for the Turge to get back uh, the gun, 
Mm -hmm. And then he has the lead in his grave with the gun in his hand, or he bring the lend out. Like, yep. Yeah, so he's he's actually in pretty decent shape. <laughs> he might be able to come back and win this thing. Certainly seems that way. You know, Mermail's a lot better than I do. At least playing. Uh, yeah, I mean, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm familiar at least. I can see. Uh, Hoban, I don't know. We don't know. Hoban might be making a comeback right now. Oh, you are right. He was max seed, and I did forget that. But like, I, he might have. Like, there are certain times you do have to push the max seed. But yeah, the max seed is going to keep Mario away in this game. It is a steep hill to climb. Hoban just has to decide exactly what he wants to do in this situation. And he's trying the least amount of cards, the most effective field to set him up for the best turn next turn. So yep. it takes the time to think about all that. Anytime you're trying to come up with a play, you want to know what your end goal is, and then. Hoban's playing on the Hoban. Yep. Yeah, Hoban is playing. <laughs> we made sure that that happened. <laughs> Hoven is playing on Jim the Jim McMahon, everybody. <laughs> I never sit back here. So he's adding the Undyne. So he wants he's going to get title online. Yeah, that, that's a smart play because he's only going to draw the one, and then he's going to be able to have a follow up next turn. But the I don't know. Anyone watching? Yeah, eight hundred. Oh, Tia's discarding. Was that a gun? Gun. Oh, yeah. And he's gonna get back at Tia's. I don't think. <laughs> I'm pretty sure Hoban cannot come back this game. Yeah. I don't he's know. He's gonna have to be. He's gonna be facing a. Oh, he has double breakthrough in his grave, so he can break through the Drake, whatever he makes, and the Abyss Dweller. So. Yeah. But still, he's still in a very, very, very bad position right now. It just comes down to what he draws next, because he's got the he's got Undyne, he's got Gun in hand. And the other card, and the lead. Yes. No, the lead is what he ditched. For oh, he ditched it already. So that's it. Pike, so. He, yeah, he only has two cards in hand. Mm -hmm. And someone said, and Mario wins with Magic Cylinder. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so he has a 3,300 guy. I mean, the double breakthrough is going to stop both of them. But so that he drew a lend. Oh, they drew a lend. Uh, I don't see a way he can kill guys. Unless that's a T. No, it's, it's not. That's not. Or is it Dragoons? I can't tell. It's Ultimate. <laughs> that's one of those Ultimate oh, cards. Oh, these shiny cards. The way he's thinking, it makes me think it has to be a T. No, he, it, it, is, it, was it was Dunes, Dunes but it is okay. nothing. Yeah. yeah. Well, that was a good match. Owen takes his first loss of the day. So he has 1-1 one, one now, and Mario moves on undefeated. We have two more rounds left. I will be back next round with the future match. Thanks for watching, guys. Stay tuned. Absolutely. We're going to cut to a quick commercial break. Uh, we'll be back after these commercials.